Hello, and welcome to the Irish Estate. Previously, I've been talking to you about different aspects of the Reverend Daniel Augustus Beaufort's idiosyncratic character. Now I want briefly to discuss another feature of this polymathic man, his work as an amateur architect. Although he did come up with some ideas for domestic residences, I'm going to concentrate now on his church buildings, beginning with this one. There had been a church at Ardbrecon County Meath since the 7th century, but by the time Dr Beaufort became involved, it was a medieval structure. In the 1770s, a decision was taken to replace the old church, and so Dr Beaufort produced this design. His elevation and plan show a structure 100 feet long, incorporating the 15th century tower graced with a new spire, the whole rising 100 feet. In the event, a smaller building was erected, with the tower left freestanding, and the church being shorter by just four windows rather than the original six. Following the model of the Tuscan barn, its pedimented portico at the west end was perhaps inspired by Inigo Jones's design for St Paul's Church in Covent Garden, London, built in the early 1630s. Now, it's been mentioned that Dr Beaufort, when he wasn't travelling abroad or around the rest of Ireland or engaged with one of his many other projects, was the rector in Navan, County Meath, the church there had been built in the early 18th century with a tower added around 1760. However, in 1815, Dr Beaufort drew up plans to widen the nave on the north side and add a porch and vestry, as well as redecorate the interior. An organisation called the Board of First Fruits, which had been established to provide funds for such projects, loaned £1,100 for the work at St Mary's. But of course, Dr Beaufort being Dr Beaufort, the scheme vastly ran over budget and his poor successor as rector in Navan, the Reverend Philip Barry, had to deal with the debts that he inherited. Dr Beaufort probably didn't give as much attention to St Mary's and to budgetary concerns as he should have because he'd already become involved in another church project, this one in Cullen, County Louth. Dr Beaufort had become friendly with the local landowner there, John Foster, remembered as the last Speaker of the Irish House of Commons. In 1790, Mr Foster offered Dr Beaufort the living at Colin, which was quite common at the time and helped to boost his income, but not so much that he wasn't soon having money troubles again. Mr Foster and his family lived in Cullen House, literally across the road from the church, which they thought a mean, inadequate affair. So the Fosters proposed to Dr Beaufort, by now in his 70s, that he design a new one for them. Of course, he was thrilled with the idea, especially as Mr Foster offered to provide some funds along with the Board of First Fruits. This is by far Daniel Beaufort's most ambitious architectural work, because what he came up with was an idea of erecting a telescoped version of that 15th century perpendicular masterpiece, King's College Chapel, Cambridge, and on a sloping hill in a remote County Louth village. While the work was going on in Cullen, the Edgeworth family came to visit. You'll remember that Richard Lovell Edgeworth's fourth wife, Frances, was a daughter of Dr Beaufort. As a result, one of Mr Edgeworth's sons, also called Richard, who was an engineer, is believed to have produced a scheme for the church's plaster ceiling. Again, it was intended to emulate the ceiling of King's College Chapel, Cambridge. The younger Richard Edgeworth, also came up with a hot air system for under the pews, although this had to be abandoned after some time as it was too expensive to run. Meanwhile, another of Dr Beaufort's daughters, Louisa, was responsible for designing the church's stained glass. All seemed to be going swimmingly until Dr Beaufort discovered, to his horror, but probably to no one else's surprise, that he'd gone over budget again and that he had spent £760 of his own money. Strings had to be hastily pulled, and with the assistance of Mr Foster, a further loan was secured from the Board of First Fruits. Even so, the building's completion was held up for some time by a strike of the stonemasons who doubted the safety of their inadequate scaffolding, and the final payment of the contractors was only settled by litigation. It's said that when Dr Beaufort was fitting out the interior, he asked a carpenter to speak from the pulpit to test the acoustics. The man then mounted the steps and shouted from the top of them, 
When will you pay me? Poor Dr. Beaufort. The older he and his wife became, the greater grew his debts. My follies and imprudences continue as aforetime, he wrote, furnishing, building, improving without money, always in expectation of clearing debts, still involving myself deeper. He really was the incarnation of Mr. Micawber long before that character had been invented. In his last years, he was threatened with bankruptcy, the seizing of his goods, possibly even jail, and had to be bailed out by his family. Eventually, he and his long-suffering wife moved to County Cork, where they lived with their elder son, also a clergyman, and there he died in May 1821. So let's finish with this charming view of Cullen and the church which Dr. Beaufort had designed. It was drawn after his death by another of his sons, the highly talented Vice Admiral Francis Beaufort, as a present for his mother, Mary Beaufort, a souvenir of happier times. Thank you so much for watching the Irish Ace Theme. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Goodbye. <laughs>